since I have attained Buddhahood, throughout the number of kalpas that have passed, incalculable hundred thousands of myriads of million times asamkayas, ever have I been preaching Dharma, teaching, and converting. Hi friends, namu myo renge kyo, namu myo ho renge kyo, namu myo ho renge kyo. So good to have you here. Thank you for being here, for your practice, and um, for your support. Like and subscribe. Takes a few seconds. Bodhisattva Act helps promote this, this resource, this Sangha. Yeah. So yes, we're continuing with the lifespan of the Thus Come One. And he's now entered the Gathas, repeating what we finished with in the last video. When he says, ever have I been preaching Dharma, teaching and converting, that's simply a statement of not him, Shakyamuni, but Buddha, as we discussed last time, Buddha Ness, the engine of life, has been responsible for every insta instantiation, manifestation of potential, including living beings, right? And that engine of life, that creative, that procreative, that, that amazing karma, that amazing energy is our teacher. It is what creates what we call knowledge, experience. Experience is our teacher. It's our teacher because we have a sentient mind to perceive it. Hmm? to witness it, the process of it. So therefore, it is our teacher. And this is what he's saying. Ever in these billions of it, this time unknowable, has it been teaching, converting this experience to this highest level? I've got something on this lens. I don't know how I got there. Okay, much better. Apologies. Countless millions of living beings have I caused to enter into the Buddha path. Isn't it uh, eh, intrinsic in human beings to reach out, to discover new things, to seek out, ultimately, a new and improved, <laughs> to use advertising rhetoric, Self, don't we constantly want better? Not just for what we own, but for ourselves, which is the same act, even though we don't think it is. That when we identify something better, we're identifying our quality of improvement. Hmm? Since which time it has been incalculable kalpas, for the beings' sake, and as an expedient device, I make a show of nirvana. This is my little carrot I put in front of samsaric minds, so that they reach further than their samsaric attainments, hmm? that those are actually a delusion. And so I teach, or Buddha teaches, our Buddha-ness teaches, that we need not be so attached. Hmm? But in fa actual fact, I do not pass into extinction but ever dwell here and preach Dharma. I ever dwelling here by the power of my supernatural penetrations cause the topsy-turvy living beings, though they are near, not to see me. Because me, see this is switching back and forth between me, Shakyamuni, the human who's attained this Buddha, and actual Buddha, which is all of us. We all have this intrinsic, inherent aspect of our being. Everything does. The only thing that gets in the way of us experiencing that intrinsic, enlightened self 
<laughs> is our samsaric disease of attachments, craving and clinging. We're so busy craving and clinging, we don't allow ourselves to <sighs> be, truly be, appreciation for the moment-to-moment -moment energies we're instantiating in this process, not this body. Our body is the cosmos. We're simply an instantiation of it, with it, engaged with it, free of constraints of time, ownership, past, present, future. It's all happening constantly, moment to moment. The multitude seeing me passed into extinction, my the body that I'm occupying, yeah, broadly make offerings to my sarira. Sarira, I think I should add that to the the, uh, the Buddhism reference, right? We've covered it before, but sarira. Ah piece of paper. Hopefully I remember. Shoot. Why don't I, why am I never prepared? <laughs> okay. My Sarita, all harboring feelings of longing and conceiving the thought of looking up in thirst, the beings bowed down in resolve Straightforward and honest, their minds gentle and pliant, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha. I wonder where Nutrin got that line, hmm? Do not begrudge their own bodily lives. There's that body thing. At that time, I, together with my uh, multitudinous sangha, emerge on the mount of the numinous eagle in this case, Vulture Peak, and then tell the beings that I will ever be here, not becoming extinct, and that it was a, by resort to the power of expedient means or expedient device that I made a show of extinction or non-extinction. Other realms possess living beings, humbly reverent, with the resolve, desiring, in whose midst also, and for whose sakes, I preach the unexcelled Dharma. So this is this odd, oddly spoken transition of thinking that Shakyamuni is Buddha. No, Shakyamuni is just this provisional vessel um, that is enlightened, to that which we all should be enlightened. We simply need to make the effort. So basically he spends 50 years or so of his life trying to get people to understand that this is already their capacity, their cap capability. Everyone's able to open this because it, it's part of what we are. It's like saying, yes, you're capable of feeling your skin because we all have it. And you're busily trying to tell yourself, skin doesn't exist. How do I get skin? How, who's going to give me skin? How am I going to qualify for skin? How much do I have to study? for? No, the skin's already there. You just have to become aware of it. It's really that ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous in, in that it's in our face, but we're so distracted by ownership, possession, craving, clinging, that that holds us in the past and has us looking into a future that isn't. We're momentum. Be here. Be completely present and engaged in the cosmos as it instantiates from energy. Recognize your karmic energy moment to moment to moment, 
with all of its tendencies and conditions, doesn't go away. It's just that you're not so invested, actually you're more invested in their process, right? Than you are in their detritus, which doesn't exist anymore. Or where they're going, it's much more important to be driving the car than looking out the back window and going, look, look where we've been. How long do you think that's going to last? Or looking at the mountains in the, long, the distance. Uh, you've got to be in the car. You've got to be driving. Not drove. Not will drive. Drive the freaking car. Buddha. I mean, he says this over and over and over again in every different way, but in this chapter, he's really, really putting it to the audience that hopefully now with his discussions on time and future Buddhahood, you'll get it. Breaking them free from the semblance, the counterfeit dharma of a false nirvana. Can we now go? Can we now do this? Other realms possess living beings, humbly reverent with uh, desiring, um, uh, resolving desire, uh, in whose midst also, and for the sakes I preach the unexcelled dharma. Not hearing this, you all did but imagine that I should pass into extinction. Buddha's gone. What are we going to do? Buddha's gone. No, Buddha's not gone. Shakyamuni, this temporary instantiation of vocal cords for Buddha. Example for Buddha. Buddha coming into physical form to wake up Buddha. Yours, mine, everyone's. Yeah, he's gone, but Buddha's not gone. I, seeing the beings, sunk in a sea of woe, and for that reason not displaying my body to them, caused them to look up in thirst. When their thoughts aspired with longing, only then did I appear and preach dharma to them. Such is the power of my supernatural penetrations, my understandings. Through Asamkaya Kalpas, ever am I on the mount of the Numa Eagle, or Vulture Peak. So Vulture Peak, as you know from Nitran, becomes the symbolic place of the treasure tower, of the teaching of the transcendence of Buddhaness, not being a human, but being a facility of human sentient minds. Hmm? And in my other dwelling places, when the beings see the Kalpa ending, and being consumed by a great fire, this land of mine is perfectly safe. So no matter how bad things look, and if you look around today with all the, the uh, saber rattling going on, the violence in the world, it could definitely look as though we're being consumed by a great fire, right? Hell, last year it was actual fire. This land of mind is perfectly safe. This land of mind, that's our Buddha land. Remember the Virmalakirti? This land is the Buddha land. The difference is your mind. That's the only difference. Ever full of gods and men, in it are gardens and groves, halls and towers, variously adorned with gems, as well as jeweled trees with many blossoms and fruits, wherein the beings play and amuse themselves, where the gods beat their divine drums, making melodies most skillfully played, and rain down mandarava, mandarava flowers, scattering them on the Buddha and his great multitude. The Buddha being Buddhaness, right? My pure land is not destroyed. It's always there. 
Yet the multitude, seeing it consumed with flame, from their samsaric point of view, are worried and fear the torment of pain. Life is suffering. The likes of these are everywhere. These sin-ridden beings. Sin-ridden doesn't mean you're riddled with disease. It means your mind is riddled with perceiving disease. It's very different. Hmm? By reason of their evil deeds throughout Asamkaya Kalpas, do not hear the name of the three jewels. Those who have cultivated merit, who are gentle and agreeable, straightforward and honest, all do, however, see my body. Perceive a better mind, a better existence, experience. Dwelling here and preaching Dharma. At times to this multitude I preached that the Buddha lifespan is incalculable. Then at length to those who finally see the Buddha, I preached that the Buddha is hard to encounter. Not because it's not there. It's just hard to encounter because samsara is in the way. Such is the power of my knowledge. The rays of my wisdom having an incalculable glow, my lifespan being of numberless kalpas, gained by after cultivation of a long practice. All of you who have knowledge entertain no doubts in this regard. You must cut them off and forever banish them. Doubts. For the Buddha's words, word is not in vain. I'm not saying this to congratulate myself. As a physician skilled in expedient devices in order to heal a son gone mad is in fact living but says he is dead. Remember the physician? Yet none can say he tells a willful lie. So I too, father of the world that I am. What do you think that means, father of the world that I am? Isn't this just another statement reference to the fact that all of the cosmos is created the same way? From this energy through formation into the realm of form. Karma. Buddha. Savior from woe and suffering, because ordinary fellows are set on their heads. Though I really live, say that I am in extinction. Otherwise, because they constantly see me, they would conceive thoughts of pride and arrogance, recklessly clinging to the objects of the five desires and falling into evil destinies. Yeah, we'd be fully entertained with our stuff. And miserable, but, you know, the entertainment's worth it. And when we've had enough suffering, we'll just go see Frank over there and he'll confer Buddhism on, Buddha on us. How sad. I, ever knowing the living beings who tread the path and those who do not, in response to those who may be rescued or liberated, preach to them the variety of dharmas, each time having this thought. Now you remember this from Gangyo. How may I cause the beings to contrive to enter the unexcelled path and quickly to perfect the Buddha body? To bring about their awakening in this present form. Right? Isn't that what we read in Gangil? Hmm? Oh, that was brief. So the next chapter is discrimination of merits. But I'm not going to start it in this video because that doesn't make sense. But I, I will remind you 
why not? Do, do, do. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Ho itsu jaku go yoku da o akudo chu ga jo chi shu jo gyo do fu gyo do zui yo sho kado ise shu ju ho mai shi za zen en igari o shu jo toka nyu mu jo do soku jo ju bu shin. That's it. We are in Gangyo reciting this chapter. It's, uh, it's our homage, if you will, to knowing this truth, to having no doubt about our Buddhaness. Right? Then we have some meditations we go through to think about, think about every word of the meditation and the teachings of the Dharma. And then we chant, just to be sure that that Buddhaness is alert, hearing our homage, hmm? like fueling our our vehicle of life. Namo hmm? Myoren Gekyo, the lifespan of the Tathagata, the lifespan of the Thus Come One. The lifespan in this case is all of life. The cosmos itself. You are not a separate thing from the cosmos. All right. I'm going to end this one here. It's kind of short for what I've been doing, but that completes the chapter. So I think there's plenty to review, think about. Please consider this with your next gongyo. Chant about it. If something I said led you to an insight, fabulous. But if it led you to a question, don't hesitate to put it in the comments so I can address it. This is a very important chapter in the Lotus Sutra. And he carries on this revolution of thinking into the next chapter, according to Tendai, for the first half of it. Nichiren agrees. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. In the meantime, thank you for your support. Don't forget, lots of free stuff, the podcast, the, uh, the, the, all the documentation and stuff that's on the uh, study materials, course study materials page on threefoldlotus.com. All the links there for supporting, ebooks, so on and so forth. And patrons, here we are, 2024, and you're keeping our Sangha going. So many, many, many thanks. Take care of your health, especially as uh, our coronavirus friend is evolving and getting a little worse right now. Please be careful. Just watch your health so that you can stay strong in your practice. Right? Savor it. Relax. Be comfortable. With deep appreciation, I will see you next time. Take care of your health. Bye for now. <laughs>